contacted an advisor and said, I have no clue what classes I'm supposed to take this semester. As a long time advisor, I can tell you that students tell me this all the time. My name is Kathy Brady. I'm chair of the UW-Whitewater Communication Department. I've served as our department advisor, and I am also a longtime university master advisor. Today, I'm here to explain to you how to read your own AAR, which stands for Academic Advising Report, so you'll be able to better understand how the AAR works, know what requirements you need to fulfill, and follow your own academic progress. It's easier than you think. The answers to your questions are found right in the AAR. Let's get started. Right up at the top, you should check on what your official major and minor are. Some things to remember. Every major in the communication department requires a minor. You can have a minor from within the or outside the communication department, but everyone needs to have one. There is no approval process for minors in our department. Any minor on campus is perfectly acceptable. It's important to check and make sure your AAR reflects the major and minor you believe you are working on. I have seen many times when a student believes they are working on a particular minor, but it was never officially declared. If you do need to declare a minor, simply contact the Communication Department office, even if that minor is from outside our department, and we will be happy to make sure it is included in your record. The next area of the AAR shows your progress toward the 120 credit total that is required of every UW-Whitewater student and is a national standard at most universities across the country. You will need to complete 120 credits even if you can complete your university, college, major, and minor requirements in less. If all those other requirements are complete, you will need to take additional classes until you hit 120 credits. The good news? Those credits can come from any classes offered on campus. On this student's AAR, we see they still have 10 credits to go to reach the 120 credit requirement. It's important to note that 110 actual credits the student has includes whatever credits they are currently taking. Need to know how many credits you are currently enrolled in? The very back page of your AAR serves as an historical record of every class you've taken, including a chronological list of the classes you've enrolled in, the number of credits those classes are worth, and of course, the grade that you received. This student is currently taking 15 credits, which are accounted for in that total of 110 actual credits. Speaking of grades, this 120 credit area on the front page of the AAR also lists your GPA, both your UW-Whitewater GPA, your transfer GPA, if you've gone to a school at another institution, and the combined GPA, which averages both your UW-Whitewater GPA and the GPA you received from your previous school. In our example here, this student has a very strong UWW GPA of 3.647, which is up from their transfer GPA of 3.563. The average of those two GPAs is 3.592. Finally, in this area of the AAR is your current academic standing. In order to stay in good academic standing, your UWW GPA must be above 2.0. If your GPA dips below 2.0, you will need to receive at least a 2.0 GPA in the following semester in order to be placed back in good standing. If you are struggling with a low GPA, please contact the Communication Department office for an advising appointment. There are a variety of strategies you can use to improve your overall GPA. Because UW-Whitewater requires that you complete 30 credits on our campus, you'll find a helpful calculator like this one to help keep track of those 30 minimum credits you must complete at UW-Whitewater regardless of how many credits you transferred in from another school. Throughout the AAR, you will see very simple coding. Requirements are in bold until they are fulfilled. Then they are simply unbolded. This lets you know at a glance which areas still require work. 
The communication and calculation skills section includes one of the most important classes of your college career, COM 110, Introduction to Public Speaking. If you haven't yet taken this class and you think your speaking skills are in good shape, please feel free to inquire about the COM 110 waiver process, which involves taking a quiz and, of course, giving a public speech to a group of speech instructors. Call the department office if you wish to learn more. This entire section of your AAR, which includes English, COM 110, and math, are all to be completed in the first 60 credits of your college career. If you are past that mark and still have one or more of these classes to complete in this area, please make this a priority. And as always, if you have any questions, please ask. Now we're on to university requirements. This is the area of your AAR many of us think of when we hear the words gen eds. We're going to walk through some of the requirements, the rules regarding some of those requirements that sometimes confuse students, and talk about a quirk of the AAR that might cause you trouble if you don't know about it. First off, quantitative and technical reasoning. In plain English, this is the area for science and math courses. There are three requirements. One, you must have seven total credits of quantitative and or technical reasoning classes. Second, you must have one four to five credit lab science class designated GL. And finally, you must have an additional class designated GL, GN, GQ, or GM. The second class must be in a different area than the first. If your lab class was in biology, the second class in this area must be from a different subject area. When I tell students about this requirement, they often say, but I already had a math class. This is a different requirement area, and if you don't like math, you can simply take two science classes to fulfill the requirement. The next three sections of the AAR are cultural heritages, communities, and physical health and well-being. Of note is Gen Ed 390, or Core 390, World of Ideas, which requires junior standing. This means that you need to have completed 60 credits in order to be able to enroll. The next section, E, Electives, is where you truly have a great deal of freedom in what you wish to study. This area allows you to pick 8 to 12 credits from any course labeled General Education. You can find courses for this area by searching on the designations that are listed, which stand for Creative Arts, Engaging Differences, Lab Science, Natural Science, which is non-lab class, Quantitative, Social and Behavioral Skills, and Wellness and Lifelong Learning. Remember when I promised that I would let you in on a quirk of the AAR? Well, heads up, because it's time to take a look at something that can throw you for a loop if you don't understand it. When we look at the University Requirements section of this student's AAR, we see that they have earned 28 credits and that they have four credits to go. So far, so good. Let's take a look at the specific classes they still need to complete. Quantitative and Technical Reasoning says it still requires three credits. This particular student has AP credits for a biology lab class, so they need a three-credit course designated GM, GN, GQ, or GL in any area other than biology. They also need Gen Ed World of Ideas, a three-credit required core education course. But wait a minute. This student has six credits that are required to complete this section, but the calculator under the header for this section says only four credits are required. Why is that? Let's jump ahead and look at the elective section. This section states that it allows eight to 12 credits, but if we add up the electives listed in this area, we come up with a total of 14 credits, two more than are allowable in this area. And there, my friends, is our quirk of the wind system. The electives area of the AAR is a catch basin. It holds all the classes that you take that meet the criteria for this area, even holding more than you will receive credit for in this section. 
This explains why the credit counter under university requirements was listing four credits required when the student still has six credits worth of requirements in this area. Those extra two credits are in the electives catch bin. The key, be sure to meet all your individual requirements and you will be okay. For this particular student, that just means completing that second math or science class and world of ideas. Don't worry though, all the courses still count toward your 120 credit requirement. If you earned an associate's degree, the things we've talked about so far probably haven't appeared on your AAR. Instead, you likely have a statement like this one. You may still need to complete the diversity requirement and will still need to complete the college requirements that we are about to discuss. The requirement for a diversity course can be met by taking a wide range of courses that focus on the experience of a particular ethnic group and are designated DV. All communication and journalism major requirements offer COM 424 cross-cultural communication as either a required core course or an elective. This course meets the diversity requirement and will fulfill both this general education requirement as well as counting as three credits toward your major. You are, of course, free to take any of the other diversity courses that interest you to fulfill this requirement area as well. Every college on campus has its own requirements for those majoring in their departments. This is where whether you declare a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science comes in. For our college, the College of Arts and Communication, a Bachelor of Arts requires you to do the following. First, earn two credits of general art. These credits have to come from outside your own department, so communication or journalism majors can't use journalism or communication classes to fulfill this requirement. Classes you can take to fulfill this requirement include art history, creative writing, survey of American jazz, Survey of African American Music, Intro to Classical Music, Theater Appreciation, or Dance Appreciation. Earn six credits of General Humanities, GH, from two different areas. The Communication Department offers GH classes that count towards some of our majors and minors that qualify for use in this area. They include COM 240, Public Speaking, not to be confused with COM 110 that everyone is required to take, COM 242, Communication and Team Building, and Journalism 224, Media Criticism. Other GH course areas include specifically designated courses in literature, languages, history, philosophy, and religion. While the Bachelor of Arts is by far the most popular degree type in our department, the college also offers a Bachelor of Science. This requires you to complete 13 credits of Math and Science, now designated GL or GQ. On your AAR, your requirements may list GL or GM. They refer to the same classes, however. This completes our review of how to read your AAR. Let's review the requirements we've discussed that you are responsible for. First, successful completion of 120 credits. Remember, it is possible to complete all the other requirements asked of you and still need additional credits to meet your 120 credit total. You need an overall UWW GPA of 2.0 or higher to graduate. You also need to complete the specific requirements asked of you on your AAR, such as COM 110, English, Math, and Science courses. You need a total of 32 specific credits listed in your university requirements. You have diversity requirement. You also have college requirements for either your BA or BS degree program. Your major and your minor requirements include a 2.25 final GPA in your communication major and minor if yours is from our department. Please remember that your AAR contains a lot of information that you have access to 24 hours a day. Hopefully, the skills you have learned in this video will help you better be able to plan not only for your semester, but your graduation as well. Please be sure to check out the video for your specific major.